Hey, what's up, guys? This is Monroe 1v1, and I'm giving you a a PowerPoint slide on time. And here we go. Time. What is linearity? Okay, so what I'm trying to answer right now, <clears throat> and excuse me for coughing, is is time linear? And I made a little PowerPoint for you, and this is exactly where it starts. But before we really get into it, I just want to tell you that time is uh, been told to be a linear relationship, but I've also heard that time is not a linear relationship. So I'm about to address that question for a lot of you in a mathematical definition. And this is my proof. A linear relationship is like a one-to-one -one ratio or a two-to-one ratio or whatever relationship that there may be, but you can say that there's this much for this much. It's defined as y equals mx plus b, where m is a slope and b is the intersection and of the y-axis on the graph. The construct of time is linear. Two minutes of time passes two minutes on the clock. Therefore, time is linear. But no, this isn't the end of it. That's not what we were really trying to answer. We really want to know, is time always linear? The quick answer, no. Definitely not. But disclaimer, this is my theory. My memories are not on a relationship that is defined by mathematics. So what does that mean about the passing of time? Is it not linear or is real time linear? Is, oh, uh, you know, that's what we're coming down to. And the relationships of memories to time is what we really want to look at here. Because when you say, is time linear? You're thinking about your memories, right? <clears throat> so, uh, personally, I have a few memories in the beginning of my life, but, uh, when I went back to make this chart, you know, it, it, it actually proves that I have more early memories than I do mid memories. And many that I cannot, can and cannot remember on call during the middle and lots towards the end. Like, there's so much more stuff today that I just can't recall in my head, but I know I've done it. You know, I did a lot today, and I just I just didn't take note. You know, I just did it, and I was on autopilot, and, like, I don't know. I kind of don't want to try to count those memories, but basically what I did here is I took my early memories, and I took my mid midlife memories, and my late life memories up until this point, and then I took today's memories, and I graphed them on a chart. I said... This is how many memories I have in a minute if I try to remember everything in this period of time, this period of time, and this period of time, and today. So, as you can see, it has a little bit of a sinusoidal, like a little bit of a, I don't know how to explain it. Explain it. It's not exponential. It's not quadratic. It's not linear, but it's definitely something, there's a relationship it looks like under just the first four. But, I mean, like, if you really want to get technical, I can break this down into a lot more than this. But that would require a lot more of my time, which means I need to know that you're interested. So, well, let's just skip this part, because I know a lot of y'all probably don't understand what I'm talking about here. So, how did I calculate those values? That's probably what you're asking. I just took a minute of my time to remember everything during a certain unrestrained period of my life. I just... You know, I did not put restraints on early life. I did not put restraints on midlife. I did not put re put restraints on late life. And, um, shoot, I'm having a big brain fart right here. I don't know what I was about to say. But within a reasonable time, I counted the number of specific memories that I have. Like this, early life. Well, I remember uh, going to the store and buying a video game. I remember when my dad gave me a hundred bucks. I remember picking the um, picking the uh, vegetables from the garden. I remember having a snake. I remember that my snake ran away. I remember that, <laughs> you know, I could keep on going. But, like, I can only do so much in a minute. You know what I mean? So I kind of gave each one a time limit. And that kind of tells you how fast you can re recall a memory. And I guess you would call it memories per second. 
if you really want to go at it and that's and that's a derivative when you start looking at the derivatives of of like early versus late now let's go back if i can can i go back if you look at the early the like early memories derivatives versus the late memories derivatives you can see that the graph is going extremely higher towards the end of the graph than it is in the beginning of the graph. I had trouble me re remembering early memories until I started remembering them. I had trouble, I had really hard times remembering my mid memories. But when it came down to my late memories and my today memories, I was just, you know, knocking them out of the ballpark, going boom, 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 boom. And as a matter of fact, when I got to 10, I was just like, no, I'm done. And that's what leads me to believe that it has a sinusoidal or it has an exponential um, graph to the memories of time versus time itself. You know, memories versus time. So if if it's... What does this suggest? I guess I already went into this, but I mean, I could make a video that goes more in depth on it, but I mean, I, I really don't want to lose y'all. So the short term analysis of the bar graph represents a sinusoidal or cosine graph, but this is also a graph of like, I don't know, because like I can't continue past where I'm at now. You know what I mean? I can't just graph out the graph because it hasn't happened yet. And if I were to continue it, I'm pretty sure that, you know, if I were to do it now and then I'll continue doing this exercise every day, it would change. So, does is time really linear? That's what we're getting back at. And my answer is no, it's not linear. But it depends on how often you exercise your mind and how many times you remember everything that you remember and how much memories you keep in your head. And that's what defines time to a certain person. So if you have a photographic memory and you can remember every single day in your journal and you can remember every single time that you made an entry in your journal and you remember the exact day and the date and you do that every single day, You've made your time, your your memories more linear. And by God, uh, that might be a good thing for you. But this is, uh, but in short term analysis of the bar graph, so sinusoidal or cosine graph, this is characterized by lows and highs if we cut it to, to infinity. You know, like if we were to like scrunch it down and scrunch it down and scrunch it down, you know, and limit the graph and make it, you know, like it would look like the graph goes from top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. And this is a, and that's like a different idea of limit limits. Like, I don't know, because like the limit of a, of a sinusoidal graph or a cosine graph doesn't really exist if you bring, bring it to infinity. But if you bring it to a... I don't know how to, I don't, I really don't know how to describe this idea, but it makes sense to me. And in math, the limit is what it appears to approach, approach or what is excluded, but it's just, you know, should be there. Like if you have uh, X plus two divided by X, there's going to be a hole at zero and you can take the limit as that goes to zero and you can say, well, this is what number is approaching, but it's never going to get that at number. And the limits go farther than numbers in this example. So I'm going to leave it up to your inter interpretation. And uh, thank you guys for watching the video. Y'all take it easy and I'll see y'all in the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you ask for more, I'll go deeper in the next video. I'll look at each comment, I promise. And, I pr and I'm not sure when I'm going to do these videos. Because right now I do not have my Elgato and cannot make gaming videos anymore. So let me know if you like this more than the other videos I've been posting. You know, I, I put a little bit more effort into it, and I still use my computer, which I just got back from the shop. That's why I haven't been uploading videos. I'm also looking for a job. That's why I'm not uploading videos. I'm also taking care of things. That's why I'm not, I'm not uploading videos. But I'm still trying to come here and upload some videos every once in a while. So trust me, I'm not disappearing. And, uh... 
Peace out, guys. I'll upload the next one when I can. Y'all are awesome. Just make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.